Good morning, I'm Pastor Kathy, coming to you from the middle of a snow day, right here in the warmth of my living room. And I'm glad that you took the time to join me this morning. At Generations, we've been doing this series called Simple Life. We've been looking at how following God's ways can take a chaotic life and turn it into something wonderful and simple. Well, we're going to pick up our series next week when we're together again. But today I'd like to talk to you about something else, kind of related. I'd like to talk to you about simple church life. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm disappointed because I don't get to be with my church family today. As much as I like being snowed in, being with all of you and worshiping God together is the highlight of my week. I hope you feel that way too. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in this world. Sometimes life gets stressful. And it's nice to be able to go to a place every week where we can step out of that and be around people that we know care about us and people that we care about. I think that's what God intended for us. That's why he wants us to be in a church family. And if we think about it, church life is really pretty simple. It doesn't have to be complicated like so many relationships can be. So let's talk for a few minutes this morning about what it looks like to live simple church life, the kind of life that God wants our church to live. We're going to start by reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. So if you'd like to open your Bible and read along with me, I would love that. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And this is a letter that Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. And he's just gotten through telling them how God can accomplish great things through them. And that glory would be brought to the church and to Christ through all generations as they follow him. So we pick up then in chapter 4. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father, who is over all and in all and living through all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, When he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended, this clearly means that Christ also descended into our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens, so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I love that scripture and that picture of the church that Paul gives us. And I think there's some lessons that we can learn here about what kind of church we're supposed to be. So let's start uh, then at the beginning of this text, okay? The first thing that, that Paul says is that we are called by God. The church is called by God. The church as a whole, that means every Christian church everywhere, and also generations of grace. We are called by God. What is our calling? Our first calling he's already given us, to go and make disciples. We're supposed to baptize people, but it doesn't stop there. We're supposed to bring them into a mature relationship with Christ. A disciple is a follower of Christ, not someone that just acknowledges who he is, but someone who lives their life in a way that brings him glory. And so the church is called by God. 
Then Paul says to live a life worthy of that calling. What does that mean? It means that we should all live in a way that reflects his love and his character. Paul says to be humble and gentle and patient. And I love that he says we should cut each other some slack, right? Too many times in the church it's easy for us to decide that we're going to be offended or wonder if someone meant something bad by what they said. The truth is we're all imperfect and maybe our words don't always come out right. Sometimes our actions aren't right either. But what this means is that we should still love each other. We should still be kind to each other. We should cut each other some slack. I love that picture of a healthy church. Then Paul says that we should be united. How is that possible? I've heard unity talked about my whole life, but I've also seen where in the church it's very hard to achieve unity. So where do we find that unity with one another? Well, he says it right there, by submitting to the same Holy Spirit. We know that God doesn't have two wills for our church, right? He has one. And so if we're all determined to follow after him and to pursue what he has for us, there's so much less to argue about. Did you remember what that scripture says? There is one spirit there is one hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father. And if we can focus on that, on that one thing, that's how we find unity. When we start to focus on all of the individual things and our wants and our desires and our opinions, that's when division comes in. But when we stay focused on God and His purpose for our church, that's where we find unity. And that is a beautiful thing and it is a witness to the world of what God can do through us. So unity is important, Paul says. Then he says that we should serve according to the gifts that God has given us. And why do we do that? In order to do God's work and build up the body. You see, he calls leaders and caretakers, preachers and teachers. He also calls helpers and givers, intercessors, hospitality team members. In order for us to be the church, each one of us has to stand up and do what he has called us to do for one another. That's how his work gets done. Each one of us serving according to the gifts that he's given. And I love how that text puts it, that there's all this one spirit and one hope and we're united, but we are unique within that because he gives each one of us a different gift and a different calling in how we support the church. So some of us he calls to be disciplers, and some he calls to be welcomers, and some he calls to work in compassionate hands or to volunteer at the faith store. Whatever it is he has called us to do, each one of us should serve according to that calling and the giftedness that he has given us. And then Paul says that he wants us to be healthy and to grow into maturity. I think it's so important for us to focus on that as a church. We're not just about adding numbers. We're not just about entertaining ourselves. We're about growing and being healthy. So how do we do that? First of all, we have to recognize that this calling for us to be healthy and growing is for each of us as individuals as well as the church. The church can't be healthy if the people in it are not healthy. So we have to pursue that as individuals first and then we pursue it as a body. God wants his church to be healthy. That means we have to be healthy. We all come to the church from different places. We have different backgrounds and experiences and our relationship with Christ is at a different place, every one of us. So in order to be healthy, what we do is we start from there and take the next step, whatever that is for you. And as you get healthier, the church will get healthier. So how do we do that? Let me give you some practical ways that we can be healthy and growing. The first way is to stay connected. God doesn't call Christians to live outside the context of the local church. He doesn't. It's how he cares for us and how we care for others. You cannot be a healthy Christian and not be plugged into a local church. Hebrews 10.25 says, Let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You see, you need to be in covenant with others who will encourage you and hold you accountable and give you what you need to grow. But you need to be there for others as well. So the church is there for you, and you are there for the church. It's a two-way street. Do you see that? 
You simply cannot be connected just through watching a video like this on the internet or by being in a large church where you never talk to anyone else. You see, God wants you to connect with other believers because it will help you to grow. And you have something to offer too, to help others to be healthy and growing as well. Next, we need to speak the truth to one another in love. We need to be willing to share scriptures with each other. We need to be ready to be real about who we are and not pretend that we're something we're not. And we also need to be able to speak to, no, to others right there in the context of where we live life together, where we're connected. If I'm connected to a body of other believers, I can handle it when somebody speaks truth into my life, right? Because I know they're doing it with the right motivation. I can speak into your life a whole lot easier if you know that I love you and that I want the best for you. But nowhere do I see where the Bible gives us permission to be quiet when it comes to speaking into the lives of others. We cannot ignore sin. The wages of sin is death. Do you know what that means? That when we sin, it leads to our death and our separation from God. If we really care about one another, we must be able to speak truth about sin that we see in one another's lives. Jesus said in Luke 17, If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive. James 5.20 says, Whoever brings a sinner back will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. Do you see that this is part of the context of living in a local church, that we can speak into one another's lives because of our love for one another, and in doing so, perhaps save someone from the consequences of their sins? We can't just sit back and say, well, who am I to judge? Or my life wasn't perfect either. We have to step in because we love our brothers and sisters. So we speak the truth to them in love. Next, we encourage one another to grow. The church is a place where we want to see each other succeed, isn't it? We ought to be the best cheerleaders in your life. If I had a bad week, I know that I can come to church and there are people there who will speak positive things into my life. There are friends who will pray for me. And sometimes there are friends who will share their wisdom with me and help me to make good decisions and to grow closer to God in the process. That's what it means to encourage one another to grow. If I hang out with people from the world too much, I might start following their priorities instead. They're not going to encourage me to grow closer to God. That's what the body of Christ is for. So we come together and we share hope and we encourage one another in our quest to grow and be healthy. And finally, everyone, everyone does their part. Taking care of church doesn't have to be hard when everyone pitches in and does their part. God made you to be a part of the church. And that means that he has a role for you to do. Your role may not be the same as mine. And that's okay. No role is more important than another. What matters is that we all do our part. And when we do, we become the church that God has called us to be. We will make disciples, we will reach people for Christ, and we will impact our community. But in order for that to happen, you, you, a part of the church, have to get involved and do your part. That's what makes church life simple, and that's what makes it great. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow, so the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That's the kind of church I want to be a part of. How about you? I want to be a church that focuses on what really matters, that's united in our love for God and our following of His Spirit, and that encourages one another and helps one another grow. No hidden agendas, no paper masks to, show, to hide who we really are, but real people who love each other and want to help each other and who are there for one another. That's simple church life, and that's the kind of life Generations is going to have. Thank you for sharing for this time with me today. I hope that um, this word has spoken to your heart in some way. I want to encourage you this morning to, um, to look on our website. We'll have a link to some worship songs as well if you haven't already found that. And um, you can sing with your church family and worship God together that way. Also, um, we'd love for you to post pics of your day on our Facebook page. 
And most of all, we look forward to seeing you the next time our church is together. Let me pray with you before we go. Father God, thank you so much for the church. God, we thank you that this is the greatest form of love you've ever shown since Jesus died on the cross for us. That you leave us here to be a part of your body, not to be alone, but to care for one another and to show your love. Father, we pray that we would be that kind of church. We pray, God, that, that the rest of the world would look at us and see a light that comes from within. God, we know how hard it is to achieve unity and to, um, to have a church where everybody serves. But God, you promise that we can do these things because you are in us. And we can do all things through you. So we pray, we pray, God, that you would just bless generations and anyone else who's listening today in the churches that they fellowship with. God, help us not to be isolated or alone, but to find that place where we are connected as a part of your body. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all that you do in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay safe.